the Six and Seven Figure Show, episode 93. Let's hit it. Broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun outside Phoenix, Arizona, this is the Six to Seven Figure Show. Tired of working so hard and having no time? Take your six figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven figure enterprise. And now, your host, author, speaker, mentor, and strategist, Frank Bria. Hey everyone, welcome to the Six to Seven Figure Show. I'm your host, Frank Bria. In today's episode, we are going to focus on marketing. But first, quick message from our sponsor this episode of the Six to Seven Figure Show is brought to you by High Ticket Program. What's sitting between your six figure practice and a seven figure enterprise? Just 12 projects, that's all. Execute those projects and you're there. In the High Ticket Program Accelerator, we guide you through every step of growth and scale, a process we call LEAP. Imagine having a world-class project team guiding you and your team through each and every step of pain-free growth, all with the goal of becoming a seven figure enterprise and moving away from painful time-consuming business operations and client delivery. Get a taste of leap in your own business by downloading our free high ticket program core offer black book. It contains more than 60 pages of standard operating procedures for your business, including onboarding, customer service, graduation, financial management, and a lot more. You can get that for free by going to the show's homepage at six to seven dot show. That's six to seven dot show for your free black book. I'm absolutely pleased to be introducing today's guest, Brian Kurtz. He's got, he's had two careers. Uh, the first span 34 years as a force behind Boardroom Inc., uh, which was a, um, a uh, iconic publisher and direct marketer, uh, direct marketing uh, firm. During that time, he was mentored by and worked with the who's who of marketing legends, uh, who he basically says he owes everything to. And uh, more specifically, worked side by side with some of the most prolific copywriters who've ever lived. And his second career, which uh, he's five years into now, is as founder of Titans Marketing. It's a direct marketing educational and coaching company where he's also continued working with the best of the best. Titans Marketing's uh, known for two and soon to be three uh, mastermind groups. We want to dig into that today an array of classic books and swipe files that Brian's republished and created. And uh, he's the author of two books himself. His most recent book, Over Deliver, Build a Business for a Lifetime Playing the Long Game in Direct Response Marketing. It's his opus, uh, but I guess not a memoir. No, uh, first book, The Advertising Solution, profiles six legends of advertising and copywriting, including Gene Schwartz, Gary Helbert, as a business-to-consumer marketer at Boardroom, Brian was responsible for selling over a billion dollars worth of products, $39 at a time, to millions. And as a business-to-business -business marketer with Titans Marketing, he sold over $5 million worth of products and services to thousands, enabling them to spread essentially the gospel uh, about direct marketing to millions. And during both careers, he's a serial direct marketer with a foundation in the eternal truths and fundamentals of direct response while being committed to over delivering for almost four decades. Brian, we're absolutely thrilled to have you on the show. Yeah, you know, when you, when you talked about the high ticket program, I'm like, yeah, that's a good thing. Cause like, you know, when I was at boardroom, I didn't have a high ticket. So, you know, it's yeah. like $39 at a time is really, well, you know, in, in, in the business and consumer sense that that tends to work. And, uh, and, and, you know, so like I tell people, I never am, I'm never, uh, uh cocky enough to say that there's only one thing that works. No, but I the think the moment that, I know, say that there's someone else who's got a counter example. Yeah. But you've got, you know, you're onto something because I, I'm, I'm in strategic coach, which is a program from Dan Sullivan. And, yeah you know, coaching entrepreneurs. And it's, it's, it's fascinating because he says that coaching, not, not just his, but coaching in general, which is part of the high ticket and masterminds and all of that, that that's like, that, that's the new management. Like management was to the eighties as coaching is to the two thousands or now the 2020s. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's really fascinating that how you can, and you're talking about six figures to seven figures it is the way to scale. I mean, if you can have an ascension model and move all of that and you know, there's just a lot of different, as you said, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But you know, the idea of high ticket programs is, 
is really crucial. So well, I, I, I appreciate applaud you for that. being in that business. Yeah, well, I appreciate that uh, <laughs> that uh, that vote of confidence for uh, for the brand. But one of the things that I really like about the what you talk about is actually really aligned to this concept because. Um, you know, a lot, there's a lot of people out there who are like, hey, high ticket, raise your prices. And it's all just, oh, you just have to like look in the mirror and just like put a zero behind your price and just, right, but it's, right. not, it's not that. It's, no. It really is about understanding the value. Like in your book, Over Deliver, this to me, that, that's what resonates with me so well is because what's really behind the concept of coming out with anything that's high ticket is understanding a true value proposition uh, that your your client wants a big meaty one like one that's a little scary to sign up for, and then just having one of the most amazing experiences ever. So that again, that concept of over deliver. But the the what I wanted to ask you specifically about this concept is this is one of those things that I think people like throw out like oh yes we over deliver, but rarely do it. <laughs> Why is this so hard for people to get? It seems like an obvious concept, but you know, it doesn't really happen. No, it doesn't. Um, but I, you know, just if you go, you know, just the page that the book that I, that the page that I created overdeliverbook.com, I I'm over delivering right there. I mean, you, you name a book over deliver, you have to over deliver. Yeah, but right. the idea <laughs> of over delivering has a lot to do. You know what it is? I think that there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, attention paid to uh, uh, acquisition, um, customer acquisition, lead generation, the front end of marketing. And that's important. You know, you have to go out to new lists and you got to get cold traffic and all of that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you go out for cold traffic to cold traffic or an outside list with the end in mind, that's how you can eventually over deliver. So, you know, one chapter in my book is you know, I have a book, I have a, I have a chapter on over delivering. Then I go to the importance of original source. So you know where babies come from, that you know where things start. And then you have, and then I said, how paying postage made me a better marketer, which was basically not to endorse direct mail, but because I grew up in the eighties and nineties in this business, that the, the discipline that went into direct mail and how many premiums you give away. And, and I have stories in my book about you know, when someone, well, a copywriter came to us and said, oh, I've got this idea, you know, let, let's do four premiums with this book and make it a big, you know, program and all that. And that became the control. And then he came back the next week and said, well, let's do 50 premiums. And we did that. And the 50 premiums were, you know, all like two page articles and they, they were in one book, but they were each very important. And you had all these different access points. And of course, that led to what? A hundred premiums. And that became the control after the 50 premiums. So that's a, that's a way that you can over deliver. That's, that's quantity. And that, that's important. But that, and that's on the front end. But then what I did was I went into the idea of lists and offers and creative. And then you over deliver there too. You know, you get the right list and the right offer. And then you get the copy that sells the premium sells everything that you're giving away. And yeah. then I bring it back to, you know, multi-channel marketing and most importantly, customer service and fulfillment. You right. know, when you're, when you want to over deliver for and, and be a great customer experience, you've got to take it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And so the customer, I, I have a lot of examples of ways that you can make sure that the customer service and fulfillment people in your organization aren't at the bottom rung they they have the interface with your customer, so you'll find out how to over deliver for them that way. And it's and and there are dangers in over delivery because when you over deliver and you really do over deliver on the renewal or on the next sale, they're going to say, "Well, you gave me so much more before. How much you know, I want more now?" Um, and you know what? That might not be your customer. I mean, because if you're going to over deliver and then over deliver, but you don't over deliver over deliver enough on the next thing, yeah, you can get yourself in a little trouble. Sure. But I'd rather have that trouble than over delivering on my sales message and under delivering on my product or right. on my customer service or on my fulfillment. Right. I mean, That's it's like a classic over promise, under deliver problem that happens a lot. But one of the things that you mentioned, I, I'm going to call this out because I think it's a really critical point. When you talk about the premiums that you're adding in, you mentioned the quantity, which is critically important. But as you were describing it, you described the quality and the relevance. 
And this is one of those things that I think gets lost when people start doing things like bonuses and things like that, because they just throw they, everything in. Yeah, know? exactly. They get stuck on the quantity piece. But one of the things that really good direct response marketers do is they already sort of intuitively know the relevance of the bonuses that we're providing. And, you know, as people are, as students of those marketers look at it, sometimes they miss those nuances. And so they, they sort of just throw everything in into the kitchen well, sink. I'll tell you and, how we did it. You know, the, the product there was the uh, bottom line yearbook. Bottom line personal was our big newsletter. We created a yearbook every year. Yeah. And what we did was, you know, that we, we knew based on the, the tests that we did in direct mail and responses from our, our customers, what topics that were in the yearbook were of the most interest. And that's how we created the 100 yeah. premium. So we took an article. They were really, I mean, diabetes is a, is a hot topic. It's, you know, it's, it's a horizontal vertical, I call yeah. it, because it's, it's, you know, 30 million Americans are either pre-diabetic or, di or, or diabetic. Right. So, you know, one of the premiums was clearly going to be a, you know, a, a one aspect of, of like a, the most important foods to eat when you're diabetic. Then we found that one of the most important things was, uh, I think it was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't Bitcoin, but it was something in the financial area that was hot at the time. And then we just did one of the two page, three page premiums on that. Yeah. So, we, you know, we came up with a hundred things and not only were they related to the, to the book itself and the interests, but then I, I, I mentioned this, I, I, I blew by it, but it's the entry points. So now you have a fascination or a bullet point on each of those things. Not everything is going to be interesting to everybody, sure. but when you're selling a yearbook, from a great newsletter over the year, you know that people are really curious, they're interested, and if they're not interested in that, they're gonna be interested in something else. So you don't just keep on 100 premiums, but you make a good point in terms of make it relevant and, and do the research of, you know, don't just guess, because you don't have to guess. You know, surveying your customers and, and knowing what the customers want is, is the first step in marketing. You know, don't, don't just, don't just fall in love with a product and say, I'm going to sell this. Yeah. You know, fall in love with your audience and find out what they want and right. then sell. Yeah, that's smart. And I, I love that you've already established like as a stake in the ground that the value proposition continues all the way through into customer service and delivery. Yeah, customers. And, and you know, I, I used to play a game. I, I have it in my book, but I, I used to sit at the office like I used to stay late. And so eight o'clock at night in 1980, whatever, um, no, no automated attendant. And I knew if the phone was ringing at eight, eight fifteen at night, yeah. and I was the only one in the office that I knew was a complaint. I knew it was a customer calling. So I get on the phone and my game that I played is how do I turn their anger into just, I love this company. And I, I won most of the, those games because I just kept on saying, you know, you know, my book didn't arrive on time or you didn't, you didn't deliver on this fascination from the, from the direct mail piece. And I just, you know, I told them I'm going to send them another article. I'm going to send them an extra book or something. And so the game was, how can I satisfy this customer? Now, yeah. you can't do that all the time. Sure. But by doing that, and I, I, I stress in my book to that, that CEOs of any company, no matter how big, should often, maybe once a month or maybe a little more often, get on customer service calls. Get on, you know, just, just listen in. Listen and find out what your, because you know, you, you, your customers become this black box that you think are just buying stuff from you and getting the nuances. I mean, you, I know, I know CEOs of small companies and large companies, they get new products from it when they start yeah. hearing the same complaint over and over again, or the same accolades over and over again. And so there's like so much knowledge to be gained. Uh, and once the cut, once the product is sold, once it's in the hands of the customer, whether they're going to return it, whether they're ha not happy with it, whether they're only happy with some of it and not other parts of it, you will learn a ton. And having, and then going back to the person who is the customer service person, having them on the front line and giving you uh, reports and feedback and people who are, are, are intelligent. And, you know, the thing is, customer service people are like umpires in baseball. When you know, you're an umpire in baseball, no one comes to the game to see the umpire. Right. right? And if the only time you're going to hear about the umpire is when you screw up. 
<laughs> and that's what happens in customer service. You know, yeah. you don't you don't you don't hear about all the good things that they do. And that's why you have to think about the customer service and fulfillment people, not as the highest price em employees in your company, but pay them well, pay yeah. them bonuses, treat them like royalty, because that that's where you're that's where the rubber meets the road on your business over the long term. And that's why when I say build a business for a lifetime, playing the long game in direct response marketing, it's not just the sale. It's not just the renewal. It's all the things that go into a lifetime value of a customer. And, and yep. you know, I really believe in all of that very much. That's, that's great insight. That is absolutely great insight. Um, uh, you tantalize us in your intro in the bio that you'd sent over to us. And we started to look about, about the uh, two soon to be three masterminds. So <laughs> I, I can't let that go. We got to right. talk about that. Uh, talk to, what, what masterminds are you running right now? And uh, what are you rolling out? Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's interesting because you, again, it's, it's actually, so I, I, I spent the first 34 years doing business to consumer publishing you know, billion dollars worth of business, $39 at a time. And now I'm doing, and what, what happened was when you have 34 years of experience and you pay attention, and I have paid pretty close attention to my friends and my relationship capital and everything that I've done that I didn't do an ascension model when I left boardroom, I decided to do a descension model. So mm -hmm. I started with the $25,000 mastermind. Yeah. And I had all the contacts for that, the, the sophisticated direct marketers. I knew I could deliver on this because I had great contacts for speakers. I knew how to run a mastermind because I've been in a lot of them. I spend yeah. in masterminds that I'm in, I'm in I spend $150,000 a year just in masterminds so I can see how other people do it. I learn, I get speakers for my mastermind. So that was the original, like, so I, I, got, I got 23 members almost immediately to a $25,000 mastermind. And I want to, I, I want to uh, uh, close that off at 30 companies. And I've, I've been around 30 companies that whole time. Yeah. Then as I descended, I decided to do the Titans master class. That's Titans mastermind. Then I decided to do Titans master class because there's a lot of people in my online family, which is my list. Remember your list are people too. So you know, you want to talk about your list as online family, not, yes. not just names. That's great. That's good. It's good a really work. great, it, it just helps me because they're real people, just like the customer service with the CEO. These are real people. So I, I just got a lot of feedback from them that, you know, 25,000, I'm not that sophisticated. I only have, you talk about six figures to seven figures. You know, I have eight and nine figure businesses yeah. in my mastermind. The masterclass people are, you know, might be at a million might be a little less, a little more, or five million, and they want to get to fifty million. Yeah. So I, I decided to, I did a one-time event for thirty-five hundred dollars about three years ago, and they came. I got speakers. I did the whole mastermind, but I did it all as hot seats, and so everybody in the room got a hot seat over the three days. And then at the end, I kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm the director of sales prevention, so it's very hard for me to sell. But I got in front of them and I say, look. This was really good. We did a good three days. Everybody's helping each other with hot seats. I want to keep this group going. So that's, I pitched a mastermind that was a $15,000 mastermind. I said, I'll delete the $300, $3,500 you already paid me. And for $11,500, we'll have a mastermind. I'll do two live events a year. My, ma my big mastermind is three live events a year. Yeah. And that was Titan's masterclass. Then I, I've, do, I've done that for three years. And then just recently, the, the thing that I just rolled out, and everything comes, it's a descension, but it's by what my audience is telling me. Sure. And I saw yeah. all the, uh, so many people in my audience, I can't afford $11,500, even for two live events, but I really want to be with you. I really want to learn from you. I, and, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have to do this, and I wasn't yeah. just responding to them because they were telling me they like me, but I decided to do what I call Titan's Accelerator. And that's the virtual mastermind that I can do here from my basement. Um, and that one is, has really taken off. It's, it's, um, and talk about the high ticket program. This isn't, I don't know if high ticket, I don't know wh where your number is. I don't think this is high ticket, but it's my low ticket mastermind, which is $200 a month, yeah. $2,000 a year, which is not bad. Yeah. And what I'm giving them is a, a live call with me once a month. And they have to send in their hot seats or send in their questions to me. It's like, they ask me anything. 
Yeah. Then I have my associate do an interview with someone from the mastermind that would be a good person that they could learn from. Then I do something from the Titans vault because I have five years of mastermind groups. So I have all these guest speakers. I have Jay Abraham and I have Dan Kennedy. So I bring that stuff in and then I get a swipe. I, I get like a mailing piece that I want to show them and why I'm showing it to them. And they get a USB once a month as I was going to do a newsletter, but I didn't want to do a newsletter. So I'm doing a, a USB in a plastic case mailed in the, in, in the U S postal service. So this physical product and for all of that, you know, that's like a, and, and I just, you know, came up with, and that's the over delivery pot, you know, yeah, for, right. for, for, for $2,000 a year yeah. to be able to, or $200 a month to be able to get all of that. If anybody, you know, wants to cancel, I guess they can, but they'd be crazy to, it's just going to be, yeah. it's crazy over delivery. So I think that's going to take off. I've got um, the launch. I just did it. And I have my first call tomorrow. So I have 150 members. So that'll nice. be a good start. And so those are my three masterminds. And I, I just, I, I wanted you to get an idea of how I, I let my audience, and this is true, like when you're doing anything, you know, whenever you have a product, like my audience at Boardroom, you know, I discovered that there was so much interest in diabetes that then I did a diabetes book after having a general health book because yeah. the audience tells you what they want and then you can, you can survey them. You can, there's a lot, I have a lot of that in my book about how to do a really precise survey to your best customers. Nice. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not saying that it's, it's a, a, a paralysis by analysis, but I really believe that you can do tremendous amounts of surveys online and offline very, very quickly and figure out what the next product is, not the next product you fall in love with. Yeah, that's uh, really good advice. And that, that uh, starting high and moving down uh, is smart. So smart. Yeah, you from know, a, I, I don't know if it's smart for everybody because I, I mean, I had an advantage because I had, I had 34 years you know, of, sure, of sure. business, but I think that there's, there are ways to ascend also. I mean, it's, it's, I, think, I think it's easier to descend like I did, but if you, have, if you start with a, you know, I mean, a lot of people start with a, a $2,000 product or yeah. less, yeah, you and, don't have to start with 25000 right? No, yeah. no. And, and you could work your way up. I mean, sure. the model that I see all the time in the launch community is, you know, a $2,000 course or product or, right. you know, and then you, you give them a free ticket to a live event. They come to the live event. You pitch them on a coaching program of some sort right. that I'm sure a lot of this is in, in your program, much more sophisticated, but then you get them into, you know, we'll say a, a $1,000 a month you know, $12,000 a year yeah. coaching program. Yeah. And then the, the, the elite of that become possibly a twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 mastermind. Yeah. So that, that is a great met. I think yeah. detention or ascension, you really have to take people through, you know, a process. And yeah. I think there's a lot of different ways to do it. There really are. Yeah. And sort of, as I, I, you know, started out, there's, there's no one right way to do anything. No. There's lots of different ways to do, and you do have to um, leverage your network and your skills and, and, and the other thing I could say is just on a personal note, I know people, I've got friends and colleagues who've been to your events and they love them. So, you know, oh, I, you. I can just, on, I haven't personally been to one, but I know people who have. And so I know you, you do the over delivery thing in person too. So well, I, you know what it was, the, the, um, the Titans thing, I was still at boardroom when I did the Titans of direct response, which was a huge event in 2014, Dan Kennedy yeah. called it the event of the decade. And of course, we're now in a new decade. So we have to find a new, <laughs> right. event, of the decade. new event. Right. So, but that event, I got all the best people. For, it was a tribute to Marty Edelston, who was the founder of Boardroom, who had died in 2013. And we got like the best of the best. I got, you know, Gary Bensavenga, Dan Kennedy, Ken McCarthy, Jay Abraham, Joe Sugarman, Greg Ranker. It was just an amazing, amazing yeah. event. Perry Marshall. And so after that event, Boardroom got all that money. It was, you know, a million dollar event. And, you know, I decided that, you know, I, I think, and this goes back to your, at the beginning, when you said you wanted to talk about the journey a little bit, it, it when I realized, you know, I was, I, I guess I was 57 years old. I, I had done a lot of good work at Boardroom. I, you know, I was an equity partner. I, I saw them going in a direction that was really good, but not for me. And so I said, I'm going to leave. This was five years ago. And the Titans thing was my springboard because that, you know, boardroom wasn't going to do uh, 
uh, education and direct marketing. And it yeah. goes back to what Jay Abraham, who wrote the forward to my book, said to me many, many times. He said, you know, Brian, and he, and he really gave me a hard time almost. He, he's one of my, my mentors. And he said, you know, if you've done it, you have a responsibility, almost a moral obligation to teach it. Yeah. And I live that, you know, and, and, and if I can't, if I'm not the guy, like I, I, I have, a, I have a, a mastermind meeting coming up and I wanted to do something on LinkedIn and how to use LinkedIn in your business. I'm not an expert on LinkedIn. So I go find the expert, bring them in as a speaker. Yeah. I did that with Facebook. I did it with, I'm going to be doing it with uh, SEO. I got the number one expert in SEO to come to one of my events. And that's how I, how I do it because bringing, I mean, I'm not, I don't have the answer to everything. Yeah, sure. My, my accelerator members, the, the 150 who are going to be listening to me, you know, I think they think I have the answer to everything <laughs> and I don't because if I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to call on the group and say, who's got a better answer than I have. Yeah. And that's why you always have to be a student and a teacher all the time. You know, well, it's, um, it's, it's, it's so important. It, it's, it's what I think is really brilliant about that is that connection that you've got between, hey, I've got someone who's got a need and I've got this network resource, whether it's former client in your case or, or present client or, you know, even just someone you know and you're connecting the dots. That, that, that shows, I think, uh, again, we'll go back to the theme of over-delivering, right? That, that just shows the theme of service, the theme of, uh, of making sure that people are getting, you know, what they need. Yeah, it, you, I hadn't thought about that, but I think that if I – if I could, I mean, I don't have any superpowers really, but I think if I had one, it's kind of connecting the dots. Like one yeah. of my members says, I really want to do more high ticket, you know, and then, oh, okay, Frank Bria, I could, I could bring, you know, it, it, that's the yeah. way you, yeah, and, and you have to go. I, I was, I was really um, excited to be on this show because I'm meeting a new person. Um, I know you have a great reputation and I wanted to know you yeah. in addition to, being on your show and hopefully giving some decent content, yeah. but to really, you know, expand my reach to you because you have a skill that I don't have, you know, and that's, yeah. that's, that's what it's all about. I, there's really a, it's funny that, you know, somebody said to me in a, in a, in an interview yesterday, they said, you know, so many gurus in the world, they, they take credit for, you know, all these, all these, you know, uh, they have a, they have a, they have a quote or something. And I, I go the opposite. I haven't, invent, I haven't invented anything. <laughs> I haven't invented anything. However, I've got an experience over, you know, 40 years that if I want to teach you about RFM, recency, frequency, monetary value, I have case histories in my background that will make you understand it where you might not have understood it before. And sure. then I become the messenger for that, right. not the inventor. Right. And that's great because I don't need to invent it, you know, to make it worthwhile. And I think that's kind of where I go with my content is, is I'm not trying to make myself out to be something I'm not, but I know I can be very helpful to people yeah. because I have 40 years experience, yeah. which is different than one year's experience for 40 years. Right. You know, I do have 40 years experience. It's cumulative. I've paid attention. Yeah. And, and just to finish off that thing about people making up, you know, a, a phrase or a quote that's theirs. There's one quote that I love, and I use it all the time. It's, it's, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Right. Which is a really important one to me. But I didn't, I didn't think of it. So I, I, was, I was thinking about it, and I said, you know, I want to put that in a slideshow when I was doing a, a speech. So let me go find out who said it, you know, because I never take credit for it. I said a lot of people have said it. Yeah. So I go on the Internet, and there were so many people who were current that said, you know, this is what I always say, you know. And then finally, I, I, I dug back, and I dug back. And so lo and behold, it was Confucius. So Confucius <laughs> was like the oldest person I could find that once said, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And then I made up t-shirts because my, my mastermind group was at this event. So I, I made up t-shirts, Titans Masterclass, and I put on the back of the shirt a big face picture of Confucius. And it says, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So anybody who saw that, who might think that they made it up, <laughs> you got you got to get uh, Confucius going to get I think he's got royalties on it and right. you don't want to piss off Confucius right that's right, right. that's right. there's got to be a, a check somewhere you have to send exactly your royalties to Confucius <laughs> estate right yeah uh, that's brilliant I, Brian we're out of time I would love to continue to talk with you I appreciate it you've you've really helped uh, I think 
get the the message through to the audience about what it takes to run um, a service business in general, but specifically yeah. the kind of masterminds that people are trying to set up. They're trying to do essentially what you're doing. And, you know, you could go through all the technical pieces about, you know, how often you meet and all this stuff. But I just think the, the attitude that you've brought to the, what you do that you, you check that box off and the rest of it's rounding. Yeah, you no, know, I'll just say one other little thing if I can. So you have service businesses. So the idea is to get at, you know, it's like when, you're on, when, when you watch Shark Tank and yeah. someone is pitching and they say, you know, I, here's my, here's my business and it's a, an $800 billion business. And all I need is this much of it. And Mark Cuban at that point says, I'm out. Don't say that here because what he's really looking for is, you know, uniqueness, um, differentiation uh, uh, and the idea is to be a slice of a slice and while I'm a little broader that I'm direct response marketing I'm multi-channel but you know you think about the guys who have like I know a guy who's who's um, got the best dry cleaning business of all time I, and I, I can't go into it now but and he he could be the the coach for for dry cleaners, because he's sure. built it, he knows how to do it, right. and and that would be the best advice I could give any service business. And even if you're, there was one guy that was servicing dentists, and he a lot of people have dental you know programs for dentists and helping them with their marketing and everything, but he realized that most dentists, and I hate to say it this way, don't want to be dentists, and they yeah. want to get out of being a dentist and get out of people's mouths at some point, yeah. and they wanna they want to sell the practice and get into something else. And he found that a lot of them were taking the money from their practices and going into real estate. So his mastermind, which he got, I think he has like a $50,000 mastermind. And his mastermind were dentists who were either positioning to sell their practice or had sold their practice and wanted to invest in real estate. Yeah. How's that for a niche of a niche of a niche? Right. <laughs> and yep. he's getting $50,000. He's got 30 or 40 people in the group. Now that's a good business, you know, and that's right. six to seven figures, right? Yeah. Anyway, absolutely. Now, I just absolutely. wanted to get that. You know, no, that's great. I agree. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever told somebody their niche down too far. I'm, I'm trying to think back yeah. of all the conversations. I, I don't think I've ever done that. So uh, one last question for you, Brian, as people are listening, they want to connect with you, find out more about what you guys are doing over at Titan. Where's a great place for them to start? So two ways. Um, if you, if you are, are inclined to spend $17 and buy my book over deliver, and you go to overdeliverbook.com. Don't go to Amazon. Go to overdeliverbook.com. There's but follow the instructions, but there are buttons there to go off. You know, you go to another window, you buy the book at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever you want. Yeah. You come back to that site and you put your email in. You get on my on my list. You become part of my online family, and then you get the most amazing bonus package. The bonus package on this page is the overdelivery because. You know, I, yeah. any, I call a book over deliver. Got to line up. <laughs> Got to line up. So I think it's congruent with it. And so it's 11 bonuses. There's a, there's a course from Jay Abraham that cost him $200,000 to put together there and 21 keynotes that he's given. There's uh, sort of the Gary Bensavenga um, uh, 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 bullets that I put together in a PDF. Dan Kennedy swipe file from the Titans event in 2014. Yeah. PDFs of two of the best books on direct mail. So there's, it's just amazing, thousands of dollars worth of stuff. So if you want to spend $17, get thousands of dollars worth of stuff, I recommend it, and go to overdeliverbook, overdeliverbook.com. Now, if you don't want to spend $17, you're too cheap, or you don't want to spend it, or you have the book already, maybe, um, just go to briankurtz.net, briankurtz.net, B-R-I-A-N-K-U-R-T-Z.net, and go in there. Lots of free content. Um, all my blogs are in there from the last five years. And they're good. They're, some are good. Some are you know, not as good. But uh, I like the way I write. And a lot of people do. So you'll get and there's a lot of free stuff in there. And right. you don't have to buy anything. And you'll get on my you'll become part of my online family. You'll get my blogs. My, I don't do affiliates. The only thing I sell in my blogs in the PSs are educational products align completely with what I write about. Nice. So those are the ways. It's either overdeliverbook.com or briankurtz.net. Right. And both those links are below the video. Both of them are on the show notes page. Go buy the book, folks. Like, really. It's uh, good stuff. All right. Thanks so much, Brian. Really appreciate it. Thanks for taking time with us today. Oh, thanks, Frank.
You got it. And thank you for being with us on the Six to Seven Figure Show. I've been your host, Frank Bria. Just a quick reminder about the free high ticket program co for Black Book. It contains more than 60 pages of standard operating procedures, how to run your coaching, consulting, or expert-based service business. You can download that for free at the show's homepage, six to seven dot show. That is six to seven dot show for the free black book. We will see you on the next episode of the Six to Seven Figure Show. Make it happen. Bye-bye.